our next presenter in the uh, session three, which uh, revolves around nanomedical structures in development today, is Dr. Francine Goulet. Dr. Goulet has been in the field of tissue engineering uh, since 1992. That certainly would make her one of the pioneers of the field. She earned her PhD in experimental medicine at Laval University, and her postdoctoral work was completed at Yale University School of Medicine in the laboratory of Dr. Alan Santinelli. Santinelli. Dr. Goulet is currently a professor at l'Hôpital de l'Enfant Jesus here in Quebec. She didn't have to travel too far. And she will speak today on a nanomedical biological device in development for torn uh, ACL replacement, a very, very prevalent and, and common injury. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Francine Goulet. Good afternoon. Uh, I come from Quebec. I work on tissue engineering, and today I'll speak about uh, I'll speak about making ligaments in culture. So you know that ligaments link bones together, and that stabilizes the joint. And unfortunately, the anterior cruciate ligament of the knee joint is uh, the target of several trauma. But doesn't heal very well. Um, often it breaks during an intensive uh, sportive activity. And um, when it's, break, it's broken, it's very hard to repair it. So there are options to replace it. And it includes synthetic prosthesis, allograft, and autograft. The preference is to use the patellar tendon, the central part of it, take a chip of bone from the patella and from the tibia, and then replace the torn ACL by this graft. Uh, usually it works well, although you had uh, to do it, you had to, you know, induce a wound, an additional wound in the knee. But uh, sometimes uh, there are drawbacks as well, so like uh, permanent uh, Patella, patella fracture and permanent pain and quad, quadriceps weaknesses because the patellar tendon is related to the quad. So uh, if you look at the ACL itself, the ligament, if you want to make a new one in culture, you've got to know what it contains. Uh, it's a pretty complex tissue. It contains fibrocartilage, sharpies fibers. These things, these structures link the ligament itself to the bone osseous insertions, it has a vascular network near the bones and, a ner and some nervous receptors to ensure the proprioceptive function. Uh, the matrix itself contains cells, fibroblasts, and collagen fibers mostly with some elastin, proteoglycans, and uh, minor components. The ACL is a strong ligament. It's a knee stabilizer that was uh, you know, documented heavily. Uh, although it's strong, it should not be elongated over 6% of its length. And when you replace it with the patellar tendon, after six weeks, you expect the vascularization of the graft. And after 30 weeks, you expect the histological and functional recoveries to be there. Now, we propose a tissue engineered bioengineered ACL that is made in vitro for, you know, to have a model in vitro and study the particular aspects why this ligament doesn't heal, what do these cells do or don't do, and then possibly use this model to, you know, replace the torn ACL in humans. So, um, I'll pass some because, you know, time flies. <laughs> We grafted our model in the goat because the, the orthopedic surgeons who collaborate with me, they, they need to work on a bigger joint than the rabbit one. They wanted some animal that had a closer size of need to human than, so th th there we go. Uh, when you put, because we chose collagen as the matrix for this ACL, 
reconstructed in vitro because, you know, collagen is the matrix in vivo. Why not use it in vitro? So we try our philosophy, the, the team that I have colleagues also, we try to use natural components in a way that they are well integrated in the body. So collagen gel with cells in it are, you know, it's a common thing. What you see is a disorganized uh, network of matrix fibers. And when you apply attention on it, you align the fibers and the cells. So we created this in culture using two bones to pull the structure. And on the left side, you see the matrix of our BACL that was grafted. And on the right side, you see the, the natural ACL. And so you can see the density is quite different. But nevertheless, um, this is the setup for applying attention on the ligament on the in culture. And when you rupture this, uh, when you break this structure, you you have a certain curve that is a typical curve. You you know the tension increases until it breaks, and you know the the tensile strength of your of your BACL, your bioengineered ACL. Um, if you use a gel of collagen with cells, you'll see that it's very weak. You know. Uh, we could not possibly graph something like this. It's comparable to jello. So, um, but if you lyophilize the the scaffold of collagen, then yes, you you increase a bit the the, the strength to two newton, uh, which is not graftable either. Uh, recently, though, I wanted to mention it here. We by some circumstances that I won't discuss here, we found out that if you dip. Um, a collagen scaffold in, in glycerol, 10% glycerol, you straighten it, you, stra you, give, you, you increase the strength uh, 10 times. So we reached 20 Newton per sample, and, but we didn't graph that. And if you increase the number of layers of collagen, yes, you will increase finally the, the strength of your, of your bioengineered uh, ACL. But what we grafted was, because, you know, I'm not somebody that wants to spoil the public money for fun. I wanted to know as early as possible if this was a dream or could be applied seriously. So I grafted uh, a ligament made in vitro using a surgical thread that is biodegradable uh, to withstand the stress during the first month post-grafting and see what happens if it could be integrated in the joint later on. So, how is made the ligament? In culture, totally. We take cells from the animal, we use autologous cells, we grow the cells, we put the bones in the tube, uh, we put the cells and the collagen together, collagen will polymerize, the cells will contract the matrix, and we get that. When we graft, we add, as I said, a surgical thread between the bones that um, we we fix together, and then we, we make one layer of collagen that is lyophilized, rehydrated, and a second layer then is added with living cells in it. That's what it looks like, that was, that's what we grafted. This is, um, these are my, my colleagues, my orthopedic surgeon who grafted at the university. So this is quickly the procedure, you probably know. This is what looks like the graft just readily transplanted in the joint of a goat. It looks like that. So we put a cast for a week because the goats would not, you know, we don't want them to touch their wounds. After a week, the goats are free to go and jump and do whatever. And it's pretty amazing to see that after a month, uh, already the graft is endothelialized. You, you have a, you know, a network of endothelial cells, blood vessels that are already inserted in the ligament. And, um, if you look at the remodeling of the collagen scaffold, you can see that, you know, we use bovine type 1 collagen to make the ligaments, and uh, we have an antibody against this uh, that doesn't cross-react with goat or human collagen, and we see that, it, the, you know, the, the bovine collagen disappears with the time, and it disappears, but... Uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't know how to use this. But uh, you see in A, the density of the matrix, so the collagen didn't degrade. It was simply replaced by gold collagen. The bovine collagen was just slowly discarded. And 
it gets structured slowly. After a month on the left side, you see what it looks like. And slowly the cells will dis redistribute in the graft. And at the end, after a year, because we didn't graft animal for longer than a year, you can see the size on, in B. You can see the size of, we have quite large diameter collagen fibers that could be easily compared to the native ACL fibers in D. And you notice there the big size of the fibers, but you also notice that there are not as many as in the native ACL after a year, which explains later on the strength of the, the gain in strength of the BACL. But uh, besides this, uh, because I, I must mention that big diameters collagen fibers are sign of, of true regeneration. These are not a li amount of little fibers that would be fragile like it is in a, in, a, in, a, in a wound that is freshly made. Um, the fibrocartilage is also regenerated from the bone to the ligament. You have the, you know, you see the calcified cartilage and fibrocartilage and you go to the ligament. And this happens, chondrocytes migrate into the graft and get organized in columns like in the native tissue. If you do not put cells in the in the implant, it will work the same. The cells of the goat will migrate into the scaffold, but it won't be as fast as if the, the cells are readily in the, the graft initially, and you'll be lax, having laxity and inflammation. So that leads to, yes, you'll have like um, Sharpie's fibers formation will happen in the acellular graft as well as in the cellularized graft, but um, let's say that the results are less uh, interesting without cells for the time being, because that will depend on the type of scaffold you graft also. Uh, nervous fibers are there, nervous endings are there in the graft, like in the native tissue. And if you check for the gain of strength of these graft in vivo, you see that before, uh, f you know, at six months, at three months, the, the, the strength of these graft are not considered very high. But if you go at, at let's say, 10 months and more, what impressed us is that we could reach up to 40% of the strength of a native ACL. And when the surgeons compared our BACL made in vitro with the central part of the patellar tendon, the conventional sort of way to replace the ACL, torn ACL, that, that method led to 30% gain. So actually, maybe we'd say 40% is not big, but then it's as good as the the patellar tendon regeneration. So we were pretty happy to see that. So we succeeded doing that. We know that there are things to improve. We, to convince a surgeon to, we know that working with them, uh, to convince a surgeon to apply this uh, technology to human <coughs> beings, we'd need a strong implant, a stronger scaffold, because surgeons like to graft something solid, right? <coughs> so. But nevertheless, uh, we will see about stronger, how to reinforce it. But the glycerol itself, which is amazingly, we don't know why, uh, seems to, to contribute to strengthen. So there are ways to strengthen. And I'll come back to it later. Um, we'd like also to find synthetic bone plugs. We would not, right now we use animal, you know, animal bones uh, sample, but it's not rejected because it's devoid of cells and sterilized and everything. But still, in human being, we need synthetic bone plugs to be safer. And that's it. And uh, in terms of nanotechnology, because, um, well, that's the purpose of the meeting here. Some people told me that in the future, some, you know, some biosensor could be integrated in graft, and particularly in ligaments. So I made just a, a little parenthesis. We, we aim at having also human recombinant collagen to, for human application eventually. We started um, looking into uh, what was the best strategy to have human collagen that could be used for uh, ACL regeneration in vivo. And uh, looking through it and looking through nanotechnology, we found that some people 
uh, start coating collagen, human collagen fibers, uh, which they associate with the concept of nanowire, uh, coat them with gold or silver and um, uh, lead to an implantable electric sensors. Well, this is an example of a paper that was published by <coughs> Sato and Webster who, who work on nanophase materials as bone implants and uh, I guess uh, they are not the only ones. The concept that I saw there was collagen molecule uh, and bone crystal that are linked together to sort of make a big uh, structure and use it for bone, uh, well, bone repair. So collagen is a molecule that, that is interesting for various types of nanotechnology application. This is our network of fibers that, have, that were lyophilized and rehydrated. Um, and uh, this is the, the network of fibers after being dipped in glycerol 10%. And you see there that the fibers seem to be all glued together, although all the cells can migrate into it grow on it and in it and synthesize, renew the, this matrix. We tested it in vitro. Um, synthesis of collagen, I'll pass that. I just say that we are trying to, to set up the method to synthesize our own human collagen in vitro. And uh, to do that, we, uh, you know that this polyl hydroxylase enzyme is one of the key enzymes to make the triple helix. And so if you use I'll go fast. If you use PBAC system, you can introduce the two subunits that code for this enzyme plus the two subunits of the collagen and these are the subunits and, see, and, and use the SF9 insect cells to express the collagen. So I won't be long talking about details about this technology, which is available on the internet if you want to read about it, but the idea is to have um, viral selection and purification uh, using, I'll pass that because the time is flying so fast, I'm sorry. Uh, the cells are SF9, they are transfected with the virus that contains all the, the plasmid uh, with the, the various uh, insert collagen subunit and P4 hydroxylase subunit. When you see, when you check if there is expression of mRNAs for the collagen and the, the enzyme, you see that it's a positive. Um, the, the selection of the, of the clones that are positive, the viral juice is done that way. You, well, you put agarose overlay and you select where there are lysis plates, you know, area that are in, devoided of cells, you go pick it and then you can uh, freeze it and have it for years. It's a very stable system. So you grow your cells at large scale and you produce your collagen uh, when and where you want. Uh, actually, right now we have reached one milligram per liter. I don't know, uh, you know, it's preliminary data, but it's pretty impressive. Uh, in bioengineering, we don't want collagen that doesn't polymerize in vitro. We need fibers. And so if the collagen that is synthesized through the system doesn't polymerize and, makes fi and make fibers, well, that's no use for us. And the first thing we tried to see if it would be making fibers. So it does, but not to an extent that we, we really wish to get. So we'll have some setup to do to have better yield and better structures. But I think that we are on the way to get a good product that uh, could be used in, of course, tissue engineering, but maybe nanotechnology too. And uh, thank you to my team, but I would rather go and quickly thank uh, the co-chairs, Martin Roblat and Baruch Bromberg, who invited me here with uh, Mrs. Temple-Forsen and Genesis Roblat that I, I'm very touched that I was invited here. And I thank you and I hope that uh, my speech was uh, understood, Ebola. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, it was an excellent speech. We are very glad that you came, uh, Dr. Goulet. And uh, I now open the floor to questions for Dr. Goulet. Yes, Dr. Kessler. Quick. So, um, do you um, consider that you can actually put um, growth factors for endothelial cells and/or endothelial type stem cells within the collagen matrix as you grow them up? We could do that. We could do that to get but better endothelialization. Uh, 
yeah, well, you know, you don't want, you, it depends what you want to do, actually. Um, but uh, you have to be careful with these cells because you have to know, you have to make sure that the phenotype of these cells will remain as such when you graft. In vivo, you know, you have to test it, in other words. But it's, yes, it's feasible. Uh, Blumberg, uh, Philadelphia. <clears throat> Could you um, say a, a bit more about using, potentially using these as, as wires, as electric uh, conductors? Uh, have, there, have they been used in that connection? Uh, have they been applied? Well, I can't tell you much because I'm not working directly in this area, but I'm, I'm a member of the Canadian Arthritis Network. And there were, uh, two years ago, I was, uh, I was in, you know, it's still on ice, we, we may do that. There are people who, who, who are working on the development of uh, biosensors, they call. It's like, uh, for example, if you have an athlete that would be uh, grafted with a, a BACL and you have some coating of the fibers of collagen which are which allow them to emit a, an electric signal, for example, that would be detected by ding, you know, a, a, how do you say sonnery in English, a little beep. And the athlete would, you know, because the athletes are in readaptation sometimes uh, quite a few months for trying to get back their strength after a BACL replacement. So that would be sort of a monitor for them that, when they do an exercise, if they reach a limit of amplitude or something, that would be sort of an application. That's all I can tell you. That's what I was proposed to do. Uh, but I would not do it myself on my own. I can't do that. <laughs> but I'm interested, though, in these, uh, in these applications because that goes further than what, you know, usually they put a brace on the knee of the athletes, and that's pretty annoying. If the athlete could avoid having that and just have this little uh, sensor signal and, and go freely, I guess it'd be more happy and it would be uh, quite functional too. So, But I can't tell you in details, I'm sorry. I'm, that's not my field of expertise. Okay, Dr. Goulet, thank you very much. Thank you to you.